Beloved devotees of Lord Gautama, we bow before his flame. 
Together with yourselves we have been in council with the Lord of the world. And now we together, this, our initial assignment, since the beloved twin flame has come forth to join me in a mighty work for this age. With our devotees and disciples, whom you call indeed bodhisattvas, some little while ago we began the procession from the Grand Teton to this chamber in a V formation, ourselves together at the point of the initiation of the angle of victory. With two lines forming the V of the male and female bodhisattvas who have truly earned their position in the hierarchy of Maitreya and the world teachers, all of whom serve under the Lord of the world. All of these devotees, beloved ones, are wearing a gold, a costume of formal dress, honoring the Buddha. It is a metallic gold and crystal. And therefore, as we have come, traveling high above the earth, the sun of Helios and Vesta, and the heart flames of the god and goddess Meru, together with those of Lord Lanto Confucius, Jesus and Kuthumi, and mighty victory and his legions, have all reflected and shown in glistening white light and gold upon our garments and our chakras. This may seem like pageantry, but it is a divine ritual, one to be impressed in the etheric octave and in the physical earth. For this indeed is what is seen in the golden ages of the Buddhas and bodhisattvas and Christed ones, as the anointed, the disciples of those who have been sent may be seen in various parts of the earth, outside of the retreats, moving together on their missions, crisscrossing the planetary home with illumination and love, song, and comfort and teachings for hearth and home, as well as universities and great gatherings. Beloved ones in the golden ages, presided over by the ancient of days, the path of initiation of the great white brotherhood and of the Lord of the world is seen as, of course, the highest way. And those striving ones are to be esteemed and respected for the austerities or sacrifices or attainments which they have made and gained. Thus, beloved, it is understood that those in training under the Lord of the world are preparing themselves one and all to be public servants in one path or profession or another. Their retreat is only for the preparation. In the latter years so far removed from Shambhala, our disciples have spent one and several lifetimes in retreat, in the recitation of the mantra and the inner disciplines, whereby they might return to the point of the one 
and that point of integration where their office should bring them to the fore once again of the community servant. Even though outer schools of Christianity or Buddhism or Hinduism may have lost the thread of this reason for being of the path of the Bodhisattva, believe me, beloved ones, that the epitome of attainment of the six-pointed star of the Bodhisattva must include the victory as the warrior, whereby the individual may fearlessly defend himself and his clan, that is to say, the cluster of devotees in his band, against every enemy within or without, subtle or gross. A very key point of the six is the attainment of that level of compassion whereby one is able to deal with all parts of life, with poise, diplomacy, mercy, understanding, and above all, justice, untainted by sympathy of the human sort, but surely adorned with mercy's delicate flame of the Bodhisattva Kuan Yin. Beloved ones, the light of purity, crowned by the attainment of the thousand petal lotus, is most essential. The one who is warrior also must have in that office the control of power and its uses. There is then also the necessity for the priest class as men and women learn to serve at the altar of the sacred fire. This path of ministration you have also embraced as ministering servants. And for the gift of compassion, you have known the way of the ruby ray cross. There is then the path of the perfecting of the soul, always in the heart of hearts of being. As you come to the understanding of that point of communion with the Holy Spirit, and in the Holy Spirit, you become the embodiment of the world teacher. Thus to teach, to minister, to defend, to hold the flame of justice. These points of the law are positioned on the interlaced crystalline triangles. And you may observe the one that is essential, the containment of the flame of the Divine Mother. Beloved ones, the healing hearts also have their positioning. We would speak, therefore, of the great hexagon of light, the crystal that must be polished and well cut before it can be polished, that you might understand the power of the three times three in the place of the heart flame. We come then with you, beloved, to present some understanding concerning the path that many of you are beginning and that many of you have walked for any number of years. The path of the Great White Brotherhood, conceived by Saint Germain and beloved El Moria for the dispensation of this activity, is for the bringing of souls of light to the remembrance of their divine identity 
bringing them to the point of integration with the real by a step-by-step -step process of choices. Beloved ones, some have not understood that many are called, but not all choose to continue in that calling. I would present to you this day a diagram of the path that you can see and understand what are the challenges that lie ahead for you and what indeed are the wise counsels to be observed. The pattern of the steps of initiation from my office and that of my beloved twin flame follows the cycle of 14, known as the Stations of the Cross. In this case, it is a cosmic cross of white fire to which the soul decides to be fastened, not as crucifixion, but as initiation, which may become the experience of crucifixion if one has not learned the art of receding into the white fire core of the heart and the secret chamber thereof. For when all the world of thy karma turns about thee, truly safety is in the very eye of the vortex of light which thou art becoming, which vortex is also a purging and an accelerating light. Thus, beloved, when you determine to enter the path at some point from your first contact with the teachings of the Ascended Masters to the day of your responsibility for that teaching, there is the beginning of the spiral whereby you yourself begin to walk year upon year these 14 stations. This is why the earlier teachings of the messenger on this path must be put together and set forth. For the more that is understood in the physical sense, as well as esoterically, as well as according to astrology, the 12 hierarchies of the sun, and also the lines of the chakras, the quadrants of matter, and the four lower bodies. The more the chila, who would become the disciple and the bodhisattva, may proceed with eyes opened, fully aware of the protection of each hierarchy, as well as the lessons to be learned, the karma which one must cut confront with all due courage, selflessness, and a desiring for God, including a certain savvy regarding the fallen ones and the manner in which they manipulate personal and planetary karma against the one who is fulfilling this path. Beloved ones, your initiation under my office cannot take any less than 14 years. 14 years as a student and on the path signifies a certain cycle complete. Please understand that this is indeed a very short period of time and it is given and was given as a dispensation in the very earliest beginnings when the first pearls of wisdom were dictated to the messenger mark in 1958. So it is important then to realize that the cycle of 12 is one circle of initiation under the 12 hierarchies of the sun. 
and these twelve visitations into the houses of these solar hierarchies must be understood as the initiations which Jesus Christ and the avatars of all ages, as well as the Divine Mother, have faced on earth in this and previous ages. You know these stations by the description of Jesus from the moment of his condemnation to his being laid in the tomb. The first twelve around the circle, then, is for the balancing of forces, the clearing of the four lower bodies by the violet flame. And by this clearing, to reestablish the action of the Trinity, the threefold flame, and its functioning through each of the four lower bodies, as the light is readjusted, regulated, and balanced, in the chakras and in the action of the Divine Mother, from the base to the crown. We desire to see a course of study so outlined that those who may leave the path for want of ignorance, for an inability to perceive or understand the initiation for something left undone, for some non-awareness, or even a neglect of caring for the delicate chemistry of the body and all that is needed to function at the optimum level of Christ attunement. So let the path be made known, let it be made plain, that those who come here may see that the Ascended Master's University, the Universities of the Spirit, and Maitreya's Mystery School has as its foundation this 14-point cycle. The sealing of that cycle occurs at the conclusion of the twelve lines, the threading of the eye of the needle, through the center of the clock, wrapping around in a figure eight spiral, the six o'clock line, and returning to the twelve. Beloved ones, at a certain point on the path, which may be on any line of the clock, the individual will confront a more than ordinary portion of his dweller on the threshold depending the point of his original departure from the office of the guru, which I have held in the beginning in the Garden of Eden, and I hold now in the ending in this hour at the mystery school at the inner retreat. These confrontations must be observed by the mentors by the teachers at Summit University, by counselors and fellow disciples on the path. It is essential that there be an awakening and a quickening of the inner Christ self of everyone in the community, that the signs of duress and distress and burden and of the challenges of the individual's untransmuted dweller be recognized for what they are before the disciple, not understanding his plight, may lose his balance on this tightrope walk to the heart of the sun. Thus, beloved, though some lines are more difficult than others, such as the three o'clock line of the pride and ambition, the conceit as well as the deceit, of the human ego. The line that is above all most challenging where many lose the way is the six o'clock line which is both the seat of the mother and of the guru Sanat Kumara. This point of encounter 
when experienced by the individual, is always the challenge. Of the astral body, the electronic belt, and the personified dweller. At that point, the disciple must come into the love of the Buddha, whose being multiplied through Gautama, myself, and Lord Jesus, may be known through the love of the Trinity on the 12 o'clock, the 9, and the 3. It is the love of the Buddha as the Lord of the world, the Savior of mankind, and the Ancient of Days who gave himself to this calling that anchors the forces, the primary forces of the soul to the Trinity above and to the threefold flame. This devotion to the Buddha and the path of the Buddha enables the soul to stand on the six o'clock line and begin to externalize the flame of the mother in love for her children and her service, as well as in the purification of the chakras from the base to the crown. On this line, it is very important to give the exercise of the Buddhist mantras, as well as the Sanskrit syllables that evoke the presence in expression of the divine Shakti. One must be mindful then also of the age of one's own years in embodiment. Thus at the age of six and of 18 and so forth, the cycle of the six o'clock line repeats itself with measured challenge to the individual. Beloved ones, all of earth has been at that point of confrontation with the Divine Mother and with the Guru Sanat Kumara, whose seat of authority is on that line of the Divine Mother. Thus, the loss of the feminine ray and the descent of that light makes this line one that is a particular pitfall. It is a line, beloved, where initiation takes place and where in most life streams in this outer evolution on the surface of the earth have the least attainment for it involves the squandering of the light of the chakras and especially the lower chakras. And so, beloved, according to the 14 stations, there are two journeys to this six o'clock line. One coming in the first turn from the 12 to the six, and then finally at the end of the figure eight ceiling from the 12 through the center to the six and back again to the 12. So understand that all of the gain and the attainment that the individual acquires on the outer rim of the clock must then be sealed as one lays upon the altar of Alpha and Omega that attainment that must then become the gift of individual Christhood by the Bodhisattva on the path. Though the goal be set that the light is given for the selflessness of the disciple, that in the end the disciple may give that light on the altar of humanity. The conclusion of the lines of the 13 and the 14 must prove what is the commitment of the soul and whether the vow to use that light for universal healing and planetary elevation will be kept. So we see, beloved, that at the conclusion of the 12 points of the clock, 
which would represent 12 years of service. There is a primary initiation at what is called the why. Whether now without apparent attainment and adjustment and oneness with the brotherhood, a certain degree of self-proof and excellence, the mounting of light, having transmuted by the violet flame much debris, that that individual will choose then to go his way and enjoy the fruits of that experience privately and unto himself, using that attainment for another round of success or of the getting of wealth or of the getting of family situations and so forth, or whether he will take all of this and mount the intensity necessary to seal all of this attainment on the right-handed path through the two wings of Mercury fastening Alpha and Omega to the point of the third eye. Beloved ones, along the way of the eighth and the, the ninth years, the tenth to the twelfth to the fourteenth, there are very serious encounters that disciples have. I would point out to you some of the problems that arise. First of all, let me point out that after seven years on the path, individuals begin to feel a certain amount of self-satisfaction, a sense that they know their way around the Great White Brotherhood and the Masters, and so they have adapted the path to their way of life, and often so much so that the adaptability of the soul is not there, it's flexibility, but rather they have seen the teaching itself, they have seen its ramifications, and they arrange the path around themselves instead of themselves around the center of the central sun of being. They have not realized that in the center of this clock of Maitreya are the god and goddess Meru, representing the heart of the feminine ray that is the sign of the coming of Sanat Kumara. And beyond the god and goddess Meru are Helios and Vesta. It is beneath this canopy and tradition of hierarchs that we come, bearing well our love for Lord Himalaya, Vevasvata Manu, and the great divine director. It is through these hierarchs, Meru, and the Father, Mother, God of this solar system, that these messengers are assigned to lead you in the path of overcoming. Thus there may come upon the disciple a certain sense of self-satisfaction, a certain sense of ritual and routine, that whereas he may continue to serve and to give the decrees and to take the dictations, there is not in fact an apparent inner increase of the rings of the causal body of light that ought to be forming themselves as interlaced halos around the four lower bodies. The reason this does not take place is that the individual comes to the point where he no longer surrenders each day and hour and year, another layer of the tree, the human tree of life of the electronic belt. But he has reached instead a point of accommodation, a point of a false sense of equilibrium where he has learned, so he thinks, to balance the best of both worlds. Because the light illumines his whole house, and he appears to be in the joy of the path, it is difficult to discern that such a one has in fact stopped the flow of progress. 
Thus it takes not only soul-searching and wise observation, but the direct counsel that we give through the messenger to understand whether one's inner progress has come to a standstill because of this false perception that the circle of life itself and of the cosmic clock is a mounting spiral and not a treadmill, and therefore every day takes one higher in vibration and on the path. Now the goal of the path must clearly be seen. It is reunion with God. It is the becoming of the great God self and the dissolution of the lesser self. If the individual has entered the path without this desire, but rather to attain a certain comfort and aura for the human self and the lower self, it will literally balk when it comes to the point of having to shed the self for which it has sought the glory. This is why the path comes to an end for many, even before the seventh year. For there is a great fear and anxiety of the loss of the outer identity, an unwillingness to experience the divine interchange with Maitreya. Which interchange must come, beloved? For in the interchange, I place my electronic presence over you as a sustaining, holding presence, while portions of the lesser self then are received over the figure eight flow by me. And all the while the light returning to you is building the true identity of yourself with your full cooperation and co-creativity as you lower into manifestation the elements of your own cosmic Christhood, which my causal body and electronic presence provides the blueprint and the pattern for. So you see, beloved, there is the necessity of the trust and the reliance upon the light to let go and know that in letting go, one will not lose but gain. This has been said before, but it is said again because individuals in this community are yet passing through this experience with truly no desire to let go of that over-self-concern that is the sign, sure enough, of a diminished threefold flame, one that has gone below the level of sufficiency to sustain a calm confidence in oneself as a disciple moving toward the sun and a calm confidence that the threefold flame of Gautama Buddha, the God and Goddess Meru and Helios and Vesta, will be the sufficiency in the hour of the dark night of the soul and the soul's testing. Beloved ones, there is a self-imposed roadblock where all of one's life becomes a concern with one's care for oneself, one's insurance, one's preparation for medical emergencies, and any manner of need that could be possibly foreseen in an entire lifetime. The anxiety concerning one's physical body, one's wants and creature comforts becomes so great at this point that the individual cannot see beyond this to the challenge that he is facing as he approaches a test of the six o'clock line, no matter what line of the clock he may be on. For you know that each line of the clock has in and of itself its own 12 lines in the 60 minutes that go round. And therefore the wheels within wheels portend all 12 initiations and the 14 on every line of this 14 
step path to the heart of the one. So there comes the moment when the individual must go forth to satisfy this desire to be in command of all possibilities and probabilities that the human creature could face in lifetimes upon earth. Unless the individual is able to slay that fearsome fear of the dweller on the threshold, he has no alternative but to leave the path and follow this desiring. This solution may be the best one for such an individual, but I would point out its cause and its cure to those who, in so having, may be able to make the leap to my heart. Beloved ones, if the four-footed and furry creatures and the birds of the air and those larger ones of the jungles can leap to nestle themselves around me or around St. Francis or Gautama and Jesus, do you not think that your soul also cannot make the leap into my lap in that very moment of self non-givingness which ought to be self forgivingness beloved ones we approach then the problem of the diminished threefold flame there are those who love the path because they have been part of it long long ago they retain the memory and they know that the ascended master's way and teaching is correct and the true religion that they must espouse. Yet they have not quite enough magnet of the threefold flame in their hearts to sustain that omega focus whereby they are in the figure eight flow with the divine alpha of the guru or the I am presence or the Christ self. Thus, their fears overtake them. They become inundated and surfeited on each line of the clock with the planetary and personal momentums of karma which challenge them. It is exactly these individuals whom we would address with this understanding. You above all, have the greatest need for physical contact with a physical messenger and representative of the inner gurus. You desire to take the hand of Jesus as Peter did when he did not have the balanced threefold flame or the raised mother light to sustain himself in walking on the waters of the astral sea. As he began to sink beneath those astral waves which confront you as you enter the third quadrant of the clock, it was necessary for him to take the outstretched hand of the master in order to be saved. This is a step of free will, but some by their impoverished sense of self through the threefold flame being not expanded enough in this age. Do not stretch forth the hand. Do fabricate within themselves all type of reasoning and rationalization as to why they do not go directly either to the messenger or to the heart of their I am presence or to the heart of one of the ascended masters or the archangels who would speak directly to them, whether through the dictations, whether through the publications, or whether through the messenger's own word. Thus the crisis of the undeveloped threefold flame is the one which we would avert, beloved. The first step is to pl trustingly place one's hand in the hand of the messenger. The second is to understand that that hand can be held 
only so long as there is obedience to the word and to the light. Thus Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments, obey my word. For this is simply a definition of the polarity of Alpha and Omega who are one in the current and flow. There is a plugging in to the Guru by the Chila, who is the feminine counterpart. And beloved ones, by that plugging in, the flow from the mighty heart of the I Am Presence and Christ Self and the outer attainment of the messenger is instantaneously established, even as one might be placed upon a modern machine for resuscitation and for transfer of energy or blood transfusion or for oxygen, which the body may require to continue. Having this assistance, it has been seen that the body and the heart and the functions may be restored for many years. But if the assistance is not received and given successfully, the individual may pass from the screen of life almost instantaneously. And so it is at that moment of faltering when the devotee, through a misunderstanding of who he is as the lower self as compared to the inner self and the highest I am presence, may thus deprive him of a victory. You see, beloved ones, in the teaching and in the affirmation of the word, we do stress and confirm that at inner levels through Christ who is your divine mediator, you can confirm and claim your divine sonship. But this claim does not mean that you necessarily have this altogether in manifestation through the four lower bodies and through a developed heart chakra. Thus, there is a distance to be traveled between the knowledge of the teaching and the integration with the spirals of the teaching, whereby here below you have a vessel that can contain the Christ of you. And so, if you are in that mistaken state of consciousness where you imagine a greater attainment than you actually have as the sacred fire of the threefold flame, the balanced chakras and four lower bodies, then you may consider that you do not need the physical support, the sustaining tie of the messenger whom we have sent for this very purpose. You may think you do not need the reinforcement just in the very hour when, because of a lack of it, you may take either a detour or a downward spiral as you come round the clock, going beneath, therefore, the high road of the rising spiral that moves on to the center of Christ in the center of the circle in the path of the 14 which I am describing. And so, beloved, the reading is clear on the part of the messenger, for we do show the quality of heart and developed threefold flame here below. And the mistake often occurs in those who have developed themselves professionally, who are highly efficient, who may be accomplished in a number of areas because of good training, good education, and good upbringing. This is as it should be, for all of culture and civilization has been designed by the Great White Brotherhood to give the individual all of these advantages that through these various areas of development, he may now turn his attention fully to the development of the threefold flame, which then finds that it can be expressed through the various areas of achievement of the life stream. And so, beloved, those who think they have a greater light, those who appear to have a greater light, 
whom devotees on the path mistakenly consider to have a higher attainment than they do, are the very ones who can fall so easily because they imagine they have no need for the support of the guru in the outward physical sense. And they are also offended if they are not assigned most prominent positions in representing the great white brotherhood. Thus I come to give you the awareness which has been spoken of in dictations in this past year of the tremendous necessity for concentration on the balance of the threefold flame, both by the devotional songs and decrees to the Christ Self, the threefold flame and the I Am Presence, and also to the awareness within oneself of those things of karma and personality and underdeveloped chakras that are an actual block, whether to the will of God and its power, whether to the wisdom of God and its practical application, or to the love of God and its compassionate, self-sacrificing offering upon the altar. In each of the four lower bodies and four quadrants, and therefore in each line of the clock, the opposition to the threefold flame takes another characteristic. And so it takes the astute and desiring disciple to see how in the daily changes of the signs and those 30 degrees between each of the lines of the clock, there is the gradual changing even as the sunlight changes in the heavens from the dawn to the sunset the changing of those things that oppose the light in manifestation. Now, beloved, it is therefore necessary to realize that until you reach a certain level of carving your way through the literal chunks of coal and darkness and hardened substance as hardened molasses, this burden of the electronic belt around the heart until you pass through these blocks in this 14-year spiral. It is very important to stay close to the heart of the messenger whom we have sent. Her most important responsibility to you personally is to represent in true justice and compassion and wisdom the ascended masters who are your gurus, to re represent your holy Christ self and I am presence when you cannot pass through the hardened rock of this cave of your karma to have the direct interpretation of immediate events and initiations. Now understand that when you see this, when you understand it, and when you adjust yourself in humility to a recognition of need, you have entered an area of safety whereby, though your attainment be lacking, you are firmly and staunchly sustained through the messenger by the entire spirit of the Great White Brotherhood. This sustaining action comes through your commitment to Saint Germain in the Keepers of the Flame Fraternity and that which the Brotherhood has determined to do for mankind through the Fraternity. The sustaining of your path is reinforced many times over as you become a communicant of the Church Universal and Triumphant whose vows, therefore, that you take are an increasing self-discipline and desire for the purity of the path of the six-pointed star. Now we come to the understanding, beloved, that those having either an insufficiency of threefold flame or no flame at all, for they have lost the divine spark, may function very well as chilas on the path with this reinforcing presence of the Brotherhood. You have heard the message 
of the Lord Jesus Christ this Christmas. You have heard that the light and the option for divine sonship is given through the messenger to all people going beyond the circle of the first fruits to whom it is offered to all beings and life waves of this system of worlds. Thus the absence of a threefold flame does not disqualify anyone from the path as long as the requirements of the Guru Chila relationship are met. Some having the threefold flame yet fall back into patterns of rote and mechanization which they had long ago. This does not mean they do not have the threefold flame. It means that the four lower bodies and the human consciousness must be held in God control by the soul one with Christ. Thus fear not, for the human animal in everyone has its mechanization concepts and its rote performances. These will be rebuked fiercely where seen, so that you may quickly choose to become the co-creator and co-worker with the living Christ. Beloved ones, there is of necessity a fundamental requirement. As I mentioned, it is the stretching forth of one's hand to receive help and knowing that in the taking of the hand of the messenger, you take my hand. And in taking my hand, there flows to you a light. To receive this light, there must be the quality and the ability of obedience. The quality and the ability to bend the knee and co confess the Lord. The Lord God Almighty and the Central Sun, the Lord of Elohim, of Sanat Kumara, and the entire hierarchy of light, down to the nearest angel to your heart, who does happen to be our messengers. Beloved ones, you have seen the gross attempts of doctors and scientists to establish heart transplants and other transplants in those cases where they have not worked. There is the case then when we desire to transfer a portion of our heart and light through the clasped hand with a chila. There comes then the realization of non-receptivity, the inability to receive that which is called the engrafted word, and the transfer does not take. This inability is based upon the unwillingness of the individual to obey the Christ commands in the simplest matters, the unwillingness to establish a priority of the tasks assigned which are always a series of disciplines given only to test the individual's ability to obey the outer representative of that Christ in order that he might be trusted to obey the inner Christ self and the peace commanding voice of the I am presence and of myself. Therefore, in all of his wisdom, beloved El Moria, in council with Saint Germain and others of the Darjeeling Council, devise this community and organization with many responsibilities and departments that could afford all types of life streams, an assignment, a joyous path of contribution whereby the testing of their souls of this ability to clasp the hand of the living gurus, to be obedient to the impulsations of the light from our heart, to receive that impulsation and to allow one's human heartbeat 
to now take on the heartbeat of Maitreya by establishing the rhythm of the receiving of the request, the direction, the suggestion, or the command, and fulfilling it not once, but in a daily ritual of performance. El Moria has engineered into all departments and services the room for creativity, whereby in the very process of obedience, one has a space and a time also to engage in co-creativity and by free will to determine the rung of the ladder of responsibility. Thus, each individual has determined what responsibility he could take for myself and Moria or for the work of the messengers. In the determination of how much effort of creativity would be applied to the assigned task, how much giving of comfort, how much responsibility to be that pillar at that post, the individual has freedom and leeway to determine just how rapidly he will develop the threefold flame and how much more of the light of our being he may receive. Thus, we come to the place where the individual is in one sense of the word his own guru, setting his pace, determining what he can do and what he will not. We have heard many to say, I will go this far, but no farther. I will only do so much, and then I draw the line. This, of course, is your privilege. Sometimes it is wise, as you have assessed your potential and the limits even of your ability to function within the givens of time and space, karma, and the body itself. However, the stretching of that ability through the assignments and the demands of the brotherhood is that which gives you the opportunity to expand the threefold flame. For the threefold flame can only expand by an exercise of free will and co-creativity based upon a loving obedience. I trust you will study these words well and come to the realization that the rote obedience which establishes a certain rhythm of life is that which enables you to mirror the heart of the guru. But the mirror may only reflect and not, in fact, embody. To move from being the mirror of the guru to become the guru's own creative self demands the firing of the three plumes, the love of the will of God, the love of the wisdom, the love of love for love's own sake, the love of co-creativity, the love of engaging oneself in adding to and embroidering upon the nucleus of the blueprint that is given. And so it is a wondrous path. And we see this path in the West, in those nations that are yet free and freest from the beast of socialism or totalitarianism or the various types of enslavement of the people. Now, beloved ones, where the individual declares, I cannot bend the knee, I do not know how. I do not know how to obey. I am not able to translate a communication that enters my ear and heart into an action that fulfills the word. Where we do not have this fundamental ability of the life stream, the hand cannot retain the clasp. Maitreya must let go the chila also has let go by his own non-alignment. 
This is the sign of the individual's inability to receive the engrafted word. This is a word that is very important, the engrafting. When there is not the word or the flame, the guru must give you a path and a course where he will graft to your being that portion of his own until your system totally receives it and you have become that portion and extension of Gautama Buddha. Now you have been taught that the Lord of the world does sustain the threefold flame in the evolutions of earth, a filigree light extending from his heart. This then is the bypassing of the individual's karma whereby there is so much blackness around the heart that the actual arteries spiritual or the crystal cord has been cut off. The comparison of this is seen when the arteries in the physical body become so clogged with debris that the area of the flow of blood becomes greatly diminished until it becomes a point of insufficiency and the heart can no longer sustain life. This is what has happened on the astral plane. So Sanat Kumara came to earth to keep the flame of life, and so does Gautama Buddha keep the flame, the threefold flame at Shambhala, and is a part of every living heart. Therefore, as the disciple approaches the path of this 14-year spiral, he understands that its goal is to come to the place where the threefold flame is developed enough here below that indeed, with or without the filigree thread from the heart of Gautama Buddha, he is able to sustain life and soul and consciousness and the initiatic path. Beloved ones, this step in itself is indeed an accomplishment which few upon this planet have attained to. You have no idea how you would feel or be or behave if Gautama Buddha withdrew that support of the filigree thread and the momentum of his own heartbeat and threefold flame. Most people, especially the youth, do not take into consideration what is the life that they experience in exuberance and joy. Because of the sustaining presence of the great Lord Gautama, it is not always clear who has attainment and who does not, since all line up with a certain base equality in his sponsorship, and all can perform as at a certain level. But then when the darkness becomes greater in the earth and the stresses increase, we can see those who have the developed threefold flame from many past ages are the ones who are enabled to endure. Now, beloved ones, moving along on this spiral, sometimes nearing the end of the 14 years, but as I have said, it may occur at any place on the lines of the clock, depending where the individual left off from that inner walk with a representative of the cosmic Christ. There does come the day when the dweller on the threshold stands there in all of its misrepresentation of the Lord's Christ. That initiation comes, and it comes irrespective of the individual's development of the light of the rings of the causal body around the lower self. Thus, it may come to pass in an accelerated and intense, intensive encounter with the messenger, myself through her, 
that you will see exactly what that dweller is and know that you are even now at that threshold where you must slay it, else you may become the internalization of that one. In other words, you may become the embodiment of your dweller on the threshold rather than the embodiment of your Christ self. This is a moment of serious crisis for the disciple on the path. The dweller is an all-consuming presence. Alas, beloved ones, not all make it beyond this point. They do not seem to be able to figure out that it is a moment for a tremendous cry of help for the intercession of the archangels, of casting oneself upon the rock of Christ in the great white brotherhood and in the embodied messenger. Beloved ones, it is an hour and a time for understanding. I of mine own self can do nothing. It is the Father in me that doeth the work. At that point, you are like a patient, and your life is in the hands of the cosmic surgeon, the Lord Christ. If you do all those things that the divine physician tells you, and do so precisely, you will survive this operation. You will become an assistant in it, and you will be able, through the power of the Great White Brotherhood, to bind the anti-self, even before you have fully developed here below your own Christhood. And when you stand bereft of the dweller because you have determined to stand, the angels and we ourselves, the ascended host, will place our electronic presence with you, providing that Christ presence until you have fulfilled and filled in the matrix of your own. I must repeat that through all of this, if you can only keep the basic requirement of obedience and the bending of the knee, you will survive. But through various mechanisms of the carnal mind, there is a self-defeating process so that even when there is the desire to be obedient, the ability to sustain the matrix is lacking. In preparation then for the day of this encounter with Maitreya and the dweller, and perhaps the messenger as the instrument of both, you then, beloved, ought to be practicing your scales in the octaves of your being, one of becoming the internalization of your Christ self and threefold flame, and two, developing skills of communication, translating from the word received to practical action, a system of obedient love. This is why the path taught by Maria Montessori is so important for children for they learn to obey the inner man of the heart as well as that which is the precise formula for the use of the equipment, the right way of doing things, and that which is the wrong way. This is why we do not encourage random use of the equipment, but that the child must be taught that there is a step-by-step -step procedure in these disciplines. The step-by-step -step procedure actually follows the 14 lines of the clock and develops in the child in the first seven years a momentum of divine order where the communication within from the inner teacher and the communication from the outer teacher become as one voice and the child independent as a co-creator with the inner self is truly prepared for the path of initiation with myself. This is why we counsel parents to study these works of Montessori, to become a part of the classroom, to place themselves through these steps and stages 
with their own developing children when it is most interesting to them because they are a part of every smile and move and advancement of the newborn child. Therefore, they themselves can be reborn through their own children and the man-child in their hearts and come to the point of dissolving anxiety and fear and hardness of heart that cuts them off in the hour of maximum opportunity of initiation with Maitreya. You can therefore see and define the path of the betrayers of the word, those who have left off their service at the altar, some who have seen the day of the encounter with Maitreya and the dweller on the threshold coming down the road, have set themselves and set their teeth to a path of mechanization and rote performance and sacrifice. And they have gone about this with a great intensity and they have missed the path of obedient love. They have missed the path of submersion, this baptism by submersion in the waters of the Christ mind. This is the meaning of the word, baptism by submersion. Thus understand, beloved, they have said with Cain, we will walk this path our way. We will demand that Maitreya accept us for what we do as sacrifice and we will show that we do not have to bend the knee, that we will enter in by our own way. When these have come to the day of encounter, many have dropped from exhaustion. Their machine method was unable to pass through the nexus from the 12 to the 6 and back again as the crossing from the 12 to the 13 to the 14 stations. Therefore, beloved, they have slunk away into the night. They have lost all that they failed to gain. And that which was upon them as the mantle of the messenger was stripped from them. And they were once more as they were before they entered the path, except they have become worse off, 10 times more the darkness for now they have indeed become the full embodiment of their dweller on the threshold, whereas when they entered the path, they had not yet gone through this transition. Thus, instead of accepting the engrafted word, they accepted the engrafting fully of the dweller. And there was unto them, therefore, no separation between the dweller and the soul, as when the cancer fastens itself to an organ or the walls, the inner walls of the body, and the original body and tissue or organ of the individual cannot be separated out from the malignancy of the tumor. Therefore, the entire must be removed if the organism is to survive at all. When the individual becomes the embodiment of his dweller on the threshold, there is the wedding, not of the soul to the bride as the bride of Christ to her Lord, but the wedding of the soul to the lower nature completely. Once this is accomplished, beloved ones, it is seen and was told by Jesus to the apostles that following this marriage, there is no more looking to the path of the ascension, but only the fire of judgment. This is the process and the outcome of the path. Thus it is told to you that you might see that the 14 year course is bringing you through 14,000 years of your own choices this most recent 14,000 years of your karma, as you know, is also based on prior 14,000 year cycles. 14,000 years ago, you were recently on Lemuria and Atlantis. 
you have had those experiences. Now in each year, you go through all of the cycles on that line of the clock, both the positive ones where you have been victors and the darker ones where you have taken the wrong road. If you can understand this and read our dictations and see how we have made reference to the clearing of the records of Atlantis and the clearing of the records of Lemuria, you can now understand that beloved El Moria has been attentive to this keenly so, so that you might have every advantage in meeting that which have been your past sowings. Thus it is always wise to call forth from your causal body of light the most positive momentums of your being and to call to the causal bodies of the ascended hosts of light. I have spoken on this subject, which in itself may be tedious for you, especially if you do not have full background and cannot visualize these stations or are not familiar with that which they entail. I have presented it to you so that you could understand more clearly the path of Maitreya. It is above all our concern to see you through these 14 years, coming out on the other side with that measure of Christhood that you may enter the mystery school, not totally dependent then upon the messenger, but dependent only in certain areas where you are moving toward an inner and outer sonship, whereby you become examples in the community of true shepherds who have earned your shepherd's crook. And its sign is truly the sign of these 14 stations and 14 years. I trust that the goal of my message to you this day, which is an alert to endure to the end and truly understand your lines of the clock shall have been satisfied by your attentiveness, your receptive hearts, and the love of the great white brotherhood who have sent me here. I trust you realize that there are other cycles such as personal and world astrology, the dark cycles affecting the planet, and especially the association of your astrology with that of your embodied messenger. For the clasping of hands also is made less difficult by a harmonious union of the charts of Guru and Chila. And where the charts are not so compatible, the Chila then may pursue transmutation on those lines of the birth chart as the cycles appear and request the intercession of the calls of the messenger. We are here then to make plain a path, to hope, beloved, that in your understanding of this path, you may see that it is difficult for anyone to pass through a 14-year program in the mystery school, that you will not only set an example, but be watchful with a new understanding of what it is to remain the watchman of the night. And that is to be the guardian, the keeper of the flame, who watches those new on the path and helps them so carefully with a profound understanding of St. John of the Cross of what it means to approach nearer and dearer to the Holy of Holies of the Bridegroom, the Holy Christ Self, Lord Gautama Sanat Kumara, Jesus Kuthumi, and my own heart so directly involved with your soul's ascent. In gratitude to the messengers who have made themselves available on a continuing basis that this path might be outlined to you in this hour and physically set forth for those to come. We seal you 
in an eager and equal gratitude for your receptivity to the teaching given. By your sustaining of this Guru Chila relationship, you do form the nucleus of the great central sun magnet that is truly our foundation of the inner retreat and the mystery school. In the name of the light to which all mankind have recourse, I seal you in the joy of the clean white page of the new year, in the privilege accorded me to be the first of the brotherhood to write on that page of your book of life. It is my prayer that I have helped you and shed some vision on the path. For though the old year and its difficulties have passed, you must expect increasingly difficult hurdles that you might attain to the point of the bodhisattva that is appointed unto you. In the name of my beloved Jesus the Christ, the blessed Saint Isa, I bid you love and truth and peace and freedom. We may be seated and sing softly to our beloved Lord Maitreya in the great spheres of his presence with us. Number 458. As you pour your love to him, know how his love returns to you in the divine embrace that is truly love's sweet mystery of this Guru Chila oneness.
After dinner, we have our concluding dictations of the evening, including that personal initiation of Lord Maitreya. He has not left off speaking to you yet today. have tarried with the light bearers here. We have meditated upon your hearts, these disciples who came with me in the golden shining splendor of the sign of victory. Therefore there is created a oneness, an inner reverberation of harmony, heart to heart and a determination and a pledge from these disciples to work then together with you to fulfill those plans of Saint Germain that he holds so dear in his heart and especially to work with the souls of light who are so ready for the path. Beloved, it is a year when I would be close to you when I would come to your heart. Do not neglect the key then that we have made so plain. A step backward from civilization is needed. I have pinpointed a universal problem among chilas of the sacred fire, which is the problem of sugar refined and processed in any form and of refined wheat and products that deprive the body of nutrients. These problems that result, whether in hypoglycemia or diabetes, are more prevalent among those of greater and greater light because of the problem of the chemistry between these substances and the acceleration of the light simultaneously in the cells. My statements to you then set forth what I consider to be an earnest and well thought requirement for chilaship with myself and my beloved twin flame. Please know that when you make the call and give those inserts so named, which sheets must certainly be duplicated for each and every one of your decree books concerning all of the factors of the enemy of sugar, drugs, alcohol, and nicotine. These then, when named, and when you will daily work with them until you have conquered them, 
you will find that you will be exorcising yourself, your loved ones, and your families of those conditions most causative of the ups and downs of moods that result in the failure of tests as we have already discussed. Beloved, I am taking you up the mountain as swiftly as you choose to run. I am taking you to the place where you desire to be, where you have desired all of this life and at least all of your years of acquaintance with the Ascended Masters. Somehow you feel that you have not quite made it, that you have not quite become the master you desired to be. And when you look at those things that have not been conquered, I tell you, a high percentage are connected to the body chemistry and the interference in that chemistry by these entities so named. Beloved ones, can you imagine an embodied master who is still prey to the manipulation by discarnate entities? It cannot be. Thus let the chilas of Maitreya prove to the world that this is indeed a path of physical mastery. It is my desire in this moment to transfer to you an initiation of the sacred fire that is for your strengthening, for your healing, and for the elevation of your soul by a transfer and holding action from my heart that the soul might be at a place of greater self-determination in the true self that is the reality of thy being. I come in a year that promises to be one of many challenges of the unreal, this unreality mounting in a frenzy of revenge, retaliation, resentment, envy, jealousy, and ignorance coming through that dark cycle this spring, whose shadow casts itself upon the pages of the new year already. Beloved ones, look to those closest to you and look to the planet as a whole. Be a lover of souls, trusting and compassionate, but never trust the force that attacks the souls whom you love. For those whom you love may be under the greatest attack, that they might be the instrument of moving against yourself. Beloved ones, we know the ways of the sinister force. Therefore, I have come to initiate a spiral of self-determination in the real self. I desire to have you focus your attention now on the reality of your real self. This reality is championed by the most beloved great divine director. I would ask you therefore to sing as you come in line, two songs. The song to the great divine director that is composed to the decree to him, and the song that you call God's real in me. Beloved ones, bring these with you, and as you come in line to receive our touch, know that I, Maitreya, stand nigh the physical octave before you through the messenger. And as she places her hand upon your third eye, know that I am transferring to you the impetus of your soul's desiring to fulfill all of the love wherewith you descended to earth to become the champion of the poor and of the light bearer, and of the homeless, and of the rejects of life. Beloved, my words are brief, 
yet they are emphatic. But my greatest statement to you in this hour is the light of my love. I embrace you and I give you my hand, strong and firm. I shall never fail to answer your call. Therefore, let all come forward now. <laughs> 